How to take good family photos outside. Well, cheers to you for trying. So delicious. I recommend you get out and try it and you will get photos of your family, but I promise you're not gonna like them. It's gonna be a ton of work. You won't even be in the photos and you're gonna wish you would have just hired a professional to do it for you. So here's why choosing a professional photographer is going to make your life so much easier when it comes to taking good outdoor family photos. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I am a portrait photographer in Silicon Valley, California, and I've been photographing families for about 12 years. Um, we've done them indoors, we've done them outdoors, I've done them all over the country. I have a lot of experience with this, and I've even tried to do them on my own. And I will say it is so much easier to have somebody who knows what they're doing do it for you. Three main reasons. Lighting and posing. I guess three and a half, because that's, that's two, but I'm gonna count it as one the editing, and the printing. So let's start with lighting and posing because both of them are really important. We remember the old film days where, you know, everybody turns their back to the sun so that no one's squinting, but then everyone's a silhouette and then everyone turns toward the sun and everyone's eyes are all closed because it's so bright or you're like on three, everybody open your eyes and you're like, ah, right? Everybody looks like your head's out the window and you're doing 120 miles an hour on the freeway in the rain. It is not flattering. We have the technology now, lights, and you may not know how to use them. You may not have them, but that's cool because professionals do. Some professionals don't use lights outside. Some do. You can tell by the quality of the work. Ask your photographer. But either way, we know how to position you so that you are not in awful light. There's a thing called dynamic range with our camera. I'm not gonna get into the specifics, but it's basically, you will look good and the background isn't gonna be totally blown out white, or the background won't look good, uh, but you are properly exposed, and we know how to put you in positions where both you and the background look good, because your family may look great, but if it looks like you're in a snowstorm or in a dark, dark cave, unless that's what you're going for, probably not what you want. But if you're heading out to a park, you want beautiful green landscapes and a beautiful family. We can achieve that for you because we know what to look for. Also, things in the background can be distracting. We know how to put you in the right light so that the things in the background, like garbage cans, traffic cones, parking lots, other people, those things aren't an issue. Or maybe you're in a nice shady spot, but there's a really sunny spot right behind you. That is going to make the back of the photo look really bright, which will take attention away from your family, which is the whole purpose of doing these photos. So if any of this sounds like I'm just making stuff up as I go, when you see the difference between what a professional can do and what most people do with our iPhones, you'll know what I'm talking about. F it, you know what? Let's show two examples right now. Here are two examples. This one is taken with proper lighting outdoors. This one is not. All right, now let's talk about posing, part two of part one. Posing, super important because we want every single person in the photo to look their best because then they're gonna like the photos and you're gonna want to show the photos off. Because if we take photos, you don't like the way you look in them, you don't share them, you don't wanna put them on the wall, that defeats the whole purpose of doing the thing. And rather than have everybody just stand there and look like, you know, we're doing a birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese, totally cool if you want that, but if you want like a casual, comfortable, fashionable look without everybody just doing like the, the selfie pose, right? We know how to pose you in those positions, where to put hands, where to put arms, where to look, how to adjust your chin, who to position in front of who. We got all that up here and we can easily help guide you into all those positions without it also looking like a very static, staged, boring 1800s portrait where everyone is just all rigid and afraid to blink or smile. We can find that compromise. And this comes down to choosing the photographer whose work you can see yourself in. If you like the way their photos look, that's the vibe you're going for. They know how to put you into that position to recreate that mood and feel. Trust the process. All right, number two is editing. Editing should be an enhancement, not fixing things that were broken that could have been avoided in the first place. So if you have garbage cans in the background, there are cars in the background, there are people in the background, uh, you've got a stain or a hair on somebody's shirt or white fuzz on somebody's shoulder, little things like that. If you've got strands of hair in front of somebody's face, 
all of those things can be eliminated in camera, which means taken out of the frame before the photo is taken instead of having to fix them all later. Also, and I'm so glad this trend is over, but I still see it once in a while, selective color, where everything is made black and white except the color red, and then they jack up the saturation on it, and it looks atrocious. It was like the mullet stonewashed jeans look from the late 80s. Like, we laugh at it now, but it seemed cool then. I don't know who actually thought it was cool when selective color was a, a thing, but don't do it. Photographers know how to edit photos to enhance the image, not to fix things. So it goes beyond just Photoshop. It's the color management. It's the, um, the blacks and the whites. It's the shadows and the highlights. We can make the image feel balanced, feel super clean, and keep the focus on your family, which is the whole point of the photos. And unless you know how to use our editing software with our knowledge of how that works, like what the mechanics are of editing a photo, trust the photographers to do our job because that's literally what we do. All right, last thing is printing. Super important. A lot of times I get asked, like, how do you charge this much money for one of these prints when I can go to Walgreens and get it for $7.95? And I'm like, well, if you want to print it on a piece of see-through cheesecloth, that's cool. Um, that's what Walgreens will give you. But if over on this side, you would rather print on this gorgeous sheet of aluminum with the matte finish on it, you don't have to frame it. They just pop, they look amazing. And it's gonna last forever. The colors are never gonna fade. Then that's what I do. I print images and your professional photographer will print images that will last longer than any of us are alive, provided you don't you know, leave them out in the rain or in direct sunlight every single day. But they're going to print properly, they're going to last a long time, the colors will be accurate. And again, it's just the quality of the material. Because if you've hired a professional photographer who took these beautiful photos, and then you go get a crappy canvas print made at Walgreens or Kinko's or something else for $8.99 because it was on sale that week, the photo is going to look like garbage. And then you're going to associate that work with that photographer and with that time and think, well, professionals aren't even worth it because this photo sucks. It happens. Also, photographers who just give you digital images so you can print them on your own are doing you a disservice because you might have the best of intentions. You really want to get these images printed, but you've got to take the kids to t-ball and to soccer practice or dance practice, and you've got to work extra hours this week. Life happens. We don't always get around to printing the things that we want to print. And the average shelf life of a digital image is seven days. They go on Instagram, they go on Facebook, all of your friends and family tell you how great everybody looks, and then it disappears forever. So digital images are cool, they can serve a purpose, but having prints that will actually last, that can hang in your home, that you're proud to see every single day, professionals will deliver that. Amateur labs will not. The colors will fade. Remember the old photos from the 60s and 70s that are orange now? Yeah, ours won't do that because we have better technology than those Polaroid prints and the, the old Walgreens prints you used to get uh, done back in the day. So that's the main difference. If you want your family to look good in the photos and you want the photos to last, hire a professional. That's really what it comes down to because we know lighting, we know posing, we know how to edit photos and we know how to print them. And again, if you just want to wing it and get by on your own, totally cool, but I guarantee you will not be as happy with the results as if you have a professional do it. If you want to know any more about the process, you can shoot me an email, mike at mikeloydstudios.com. I'm happy to help you out. So if you want to know more about booking a photo shoot with me, you can contact me through my website, mikeloydstudios.com. I would love to have you in front of my camera and create these gorgeous photos that you can cherish for generations. And I have other great videos on this channel as to how to pick a great photographer for you. If maybe you don't want to fly out to California, you want to find somebody locally, that will be a great option as well. So be sure to check out those videos as to how to pick the right photographer for you. You are amazing. See you inside.